Hello, everybody. How's it going? Welcome to the cave. Holy smokes. It's been a while. It's been a long while. Still looking as dense as ever in here. Jeez. Um, how's it going? So, comics 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 so it's been a long time it's been quite a while um, I'm not picking much up these days you'll have to excuse me I got a bit of a cold so if I'm coughing uncontrollably uh, my apologies um, it's been a long time since I've been picking anything up I don't go out nearly as much as I do I don't do weekly pull list or anything uh, but today was our Winnipeg mini comic convention. So it's um, put on by uh, the fine, fine people at Thirsty's Flea Market that I've talked about many, many times on the channel that's down the road a couple of blocks from my house. And I think this is the, is it the fourth or fifth time that I've done this convention? I'm not sure. Something like that. I'm thinking maybe the fourth, but I'm not too sure. The last one was January or February. I think it was February, and it was kind of a disaster, and that was across the board. That's just not me. A lot of the vendors and, and the ones even that I talked to again today were saying that that one was probably the least attended convention they've done in many, many, many years. Um, I have a feeling it might have been just too close to after Christmas. So today was the convention and the same spot, the Holiday Inn down the road, uh, which is great. Everything is really close. Takes me no time. Um, I did it myself this time. Uh, the guy that I usually do the convention with couldn't do it, but that's fine. Again, it's, it's, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. It's $50 for a table, so it doesn't break the bank by any stretch. So I paid for that. Um, I had booked about a month ago, I had, I had talked about getting a table, and then I just never made it back to pay him the money. Um, so when I called him yesterday, I think, no, Friday, I called him on Friday just to kind of check in to make sure that I still had a spot. Um, I did, thankfully. It was out in the hallway, which I thought might be, I hummed and hawed about it when he said that I had that he had a spot for me in the hallway if I wanted it. But I took it, and honestly, I'm really, really glad I did. Um, because you're not in the main room, there feels like there's a, a little bit more room to stretch out. Um, I didn't feel like I was kind of cramped. I was up against a wall, but there was more than enough aisle way for people to kind of stand and browse through the books, and then people pass by them with a lot of space. Um, I didn't feel kind of boxed in. It was nice not to be right in the noise. <coughs> of the convention itself sorry excuse me <clears throat> it was nice to be separated down the hall either side of me were entrances so i was getting people that were coming into the bathroom or coming into the bathroom coming into the con i was near the bathroom so people that were going to the bathrooms were some of them were discovering like hey there's a bunch of tables out here i wasn't out there by myself there was a bunch of other guys around um guy doing some original art to one side of me, uh, guys selling comics to the left of me. Um, it was one, two, three, four, five. I think there were six tables total out there. <coughs> and uh, it was kind of high traffic. It The entire convention was really uh, busy. There was high traffic throughout the whole thing. Uh, very, very successful overall. So as I was getting ready Saturday night, um, as I was getting ready Saturday night and putting books together and pricing things and everything, uh, I, I'd posted on Instagram that I was getting ready for the convention and a friend of mine asked if I had any horror books. So I, I sent her pictures of the books that I had and she ended up buying a bunch. So I, I made the money back for the convention even before I got to the convention, which was really nice. Um, so even going in, I was already breaking even, which was a great thing. I mean, I actually made a fair bit of change at this one. <clears throat> Obviously, I bought one or two things. Nerdy Vision, what's up? Uh, nice to see you as well. And uh, yeah, it was a great time. Um, 
I'm really glad that I went and gave it another shot because after the last convention, I was really hesitant on whether or not to do this one again. But I figured I'd try one more time just to see how it went. And this one kind of changed it back to the way that it was the other times that we've done the show. Uh, really great. I brought a lot of stuff. I had a full table to myself, which was actually kind of nice, to be honest. It's nice to have someone there beside you to hang out and everything, but it was kind of nice to have the full run of the table. I sold quite a lot of graphic novels. I sold a, a few comic sets. Um, I sold a bunch of single issues. I sold some a bunch of underground comics, actually, surprisingly. <coughs> um and just had a really great time. It was nice to sit and chat with people. I saw our friend Garrett and I saw Nerdy Vision as well. Um, so it was really kind of cool. Uh, me and I think three friends of mine are, are chipping in. We're doing the big convention, um, the C4 comic convention. It's three day event. Uh, the price has gone up. So for a 10 foot by 10 foot area with two tables. So when you get a 10 foot by 10 foot area, it comes with one table for an extra $30. You can rent an, a second table um, for the three days. So for, so it's five, it was $550 plus the $30 for the table for us to get this 10 by 10 space for three days. So divide that by four people. There's a fifth that's thinking he may come into it as well, which would be great, cutting the cost down even that much more. Um, so it's pricey, but the amount of books that I have to sell and the couple of friends of mine, the amount of books that they have to sell, uh, I really think it may be worth it to give it a shot uh, just to see what it's like now that I've done this small convention a number of times just to see what it's like in that atmosphere. Um, again, as everybody knows and everybody who's gone to cons, they know that they become kind of like a pop culture type of event. I mean, comics are still a, a sizable portion of this convention here in town, the big one, but there's so much more. The thing that I'm hoping is, even when I've gone in previous years, gone on the Sunday, uh, there's still quite a few people looking through comics. I'm hoping that it's kind of one of those things of the regulars to this convention see some new faces and want to look through the books. And <coughs> I think especially the variety that the group of us are going to have at this convention, I'm hoping we'll really draw people in. Um, I'm going to be over the next, that, that takes place October 27th, 28th, and 29th. So over the next month, I'm really going to be digging into my collection. There's a, a chunk of stuff that I'm going to be getting rid of. Um, I really need it to be this sh these shelves beside me here. I need my collection to not grow any bigger than this. So I'm really going to be taking a hard look at stuff um, and selling things. I already have a bunch of things earmarked to go. Now, a lot of it is going to end up staying as well, but... Uh, I think it'll just be a really good opportunity to um, just a good opportunity to hit up a new crowd of people. I uh, just looked at Nerdy Vision is saying he just looked at the C4 website. Looks like I'm going just because Jim Shooter will be there. Oh, that's awesome. See you in October. Yes, absolutely. You'll see me there for sure. Um, I'm going to be doing all three days. There's a couple of friends of mine who one of them can't do Friday, so he's going to do Saturday, Sunday. You get two passes to the convention when you book a booth. Um, so we'll see. Maybe we can kind of shift one of them around. And uh, that's the only thing that I that makes me a little hesitant. Three days in a big convention kind of <coughs> tires me out a little bit just thinking about it. But we'll see how it goes. The way that it's planned out so far, if there's a day that I want off, Saturday might be that day. Saturday might be a good day to kind of not show up. So maybe I do Friday and Sunday. I haven't quite decided yet. We're all going to get together and talk about it to see what schedule works for everybody. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of excited about it, and especially after being in this mode of selling today. Uh, and the conversations that I had with people, it really puts me in the mode of doing another convention. I kind of wish today went a little longer. Um, it was just really, really great. Uh, I, I was a bit worried about doing this by myself. 
but it turned out really well. Um, had some return customers, which is always a good thing, uh, and ended up meeting some new people that I've never met before. So that was fantastic as well. There's a comic group here that I wasn't aware of. I once I saw the T-shirts, I did recognize the name, and the name is I'm escape is escaping me. Nerdy Vision, if you're watching, I'm sure that you remember the name. Uh, I think maybe you were wearing one of the shirts today. Um, so it was kind of nice to meet people that are part of that group and just kind of talk to people. I got into a few conversations with a couple of people about underground comics, uh, which was great. And people who were fans of them. One guy in particular who was a uh, Winnipeg comic addicts. Thank you very much. Nerd division. Um, one guy who was a big underground comics fan, he doesn't bring them to the convention. He's got his collection that he wants to hold on to. And as we were kind of talking, I was telling him about the Comics Joint website and Fogel's Price Guide. And we were just talking about various artists and books that we liked and everything. Sounds like he's got quite a collection. And I, I just kind of put the bug in his ear that uh, if ever you're looking to sell some of those, um, I'm the guy. <laughs> Please let me know. I'm sure we can work out something. <coughs> So yeah, it was great. It's great to know that there's even more people out there. Um, I'd say there was, like I met two guys, two new guys that were into undergrounds. One that I ended up trading with actually, he found some books that he wanted from my uh, stack of underground doubles that I had. And later on in the day when I finally got a chance to walk away from the table when my son came to hang out for a couple hours, um, I found a couple of books at his table too. So that sort of thing was great. And I mean, as usual with the vendors, everybody was willing to give deals to other vendors. I did to other vendors as well. Um, just a really, really good day. I'm really glad that I gave it another chance. I'm really glad that the last one didn't totally burn me out. So enough of that talk. Um, one of the many things that I was really excited to find, the table beside me, uh, they had some amazing stuff. Um, I finally got my hands on three issues of Comics International. Um, I got the three issues. They ended up charging me $10 for the three issues. They were listed at $5, $5, and $7. So they gave me a hell of a deal. Uh, they came over to look at some books on my table too, but they didn't, they only, he only took like two books. So there wasn't really much of a deal for him to have because they were really cheap books. Um, there was just nothing else that they really wanted. I was, I was hoping there was partially to kind of repay their generosity, but also to move some of the books out of the boxes. Um, so Richard Corbin, these are full color. Uh, the thing that is strange to me, I don't know if you can see, you can see that line there. I've not experienced magazines maybe once or twice that have been stapled. It's, and it's not like it's falling apart when I was flipping through these sitting at my table. Um, it's not like the glue is coming undone, but there are staples there, which is kind of annoying because you can't open the magazine a lot. Um, I guess it opens up enough, but uh, I kind of, I was playing around the back cover of one just to see if maybe I could pry open the staple and pull it out. I don't know how much I want to do with that though. I don't want to mess the whole thing up. Anyway, so this is Comics International number four. Um, even at those prices, five, five, and seven, I don't, when I've seen these in town, they've been really expensive. So even at $5, $5, and $7, I would have been more than willing to pay that. Uh, but it was really, really nice of them to give me, uh, to give me such a good deal. They're fantastic books. I've got a couple of the Corbin stories reprinted in a, another format. And they're from this issue here, this story in particular with this guy fighting a shark. So some of the stories I have read before, but it is nice to get um, the originals. So this is Comics International number five. And, I, and according to my app, there was only five issues. I don't know if that's true. Um, but again, they're all full color, and it's this kind of palette that you see on the front cover. I really, really like it. They're, they're fantastic looking books. They're all in really incredible shape, but all of them have. And you can even see the staples kind of pushing through the front cover in that one. So that's unusual to me. I haven't really seen that too often with magazines, <coughs> unless they're falling apart. Um, hit a $2 bin. Uh, I didn't get a ton of books, but I did hit a $2 bin from a guy who works at Thirsty's, and he had a few issues that I've been 
that jumped out at me basically. Um, another issue of Yummy Fur, Chester Brown, issue number 13. I've only got about five or six of these singles. Uh, so getting any of them is a great thing. So look at the inside there. So I think, what was this, 1989, I want to say? Uh, 1988. So this is November 1988. So Yummy Fur. And finishing off, really excited to see these. I never, I have never seen these around. Uh, Death Rattle is an underground that anthology that I've talked about before. Um, <coughs> actually sold Death Rattle number one, volume one today because I had doubles of that one so that one sold uh, to somebody who was really excited to see it which again is makes it so much so worth it to, to do these shows um, so volume three I, I never see around I now have the whole thing this is issue number four of death rattle volume three and <clears throat> issue number five of death rattle volume three and I say that there's five issues again because the CLZ app has five issues listed, but in the back, there's an, a preview for issue six, and I don't know if that actually came to be. <coughs> so you know what? While I'm sitting right here by the book, let's have a little look. Uh, Death Rattle Volume 3. Yeah, no, it only went to five issues, so that's the whole kit and caboodle for me that's the whole series which is great um and now i think i'm complete all three volumes of death rattle which is pretty exciting and this one has a matt howarth <coughs> story in it right here with a character that looks a lot like uh dalgota from the fantagraphics series that i've talked about before called Clem diggers. <coughs> and they're in beautiful shape and for two bucks a pop. You can't go wrong. Um, the trade that I did yielded some great results. Uh, a couple of undergrounds. This is Young Lust number two. He has it listed as the fourth printing. I haven't looked these up yet. Um, so Young Lust number two. I don't come across those Young Lust books very much. Uh, even online, they it's not a title that pops up a lot. And then, believe it or not, I was actually missing uh, Freak Brothers from my collection for the longest time. So issue number 12 of the fabulous furry Freak Brothers, uh, he has it written down as the third printing here. So that's pretty cool to have that one. Now I've, that's my entire Freak Brothers collection complete which is great. So those two I got in trade. He picked, uh, I think he had four books. And then, you know me, when it comes to these conventions, I like to put a dent in uh, Daredevil. <coughs> and I put a hell of a dent in it today. <coughs> yeah, that's how we sold it there, G-Don. Uh, the tape cover in her ass. That's how uh, he had it in his uh, in the box there. The funny thing about it is, though, you can see right through the tape, which I thought was fantastic. He put it on the front cover. Um, I thought that was pretty classy. Plus, then <laughs> the puddle dripping on the ground. I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, good spot there, G Don. Good look. So I'm getting really close to finishing. Uh, finishing my Daredevil first 300, I was going through my list today and kind of checking out the numbers, and I haven't really sat with my list for very for a little while. Um, after after I bought these today, I'm 43 issues, 42 issues away from completing the first 300. Uh, so it's all of a sudden, it's really doable. It's it's cl a lot closer than I thought as well. I mean, granted. Um, that's numbers one to eight are in there. Nine is the earliest one that I have. Um, so, I mean, it's not exactly like I have some that are really easy to find, but the rest of them are pretty affordable for the most part. So going backwards, um, I bought quite a few from 
and I, I'm blanking on his name. I bought from him every single time. I know that uh, Comic Guy Rules buys from him all the time too. He's got great prices. Uh, I'm always really happy with the condition of the books when I buy them. Um, so I bought a number of them from him. Uh, he's the guy who has things priced like this, the overstreet price, and then how much he's charging you for the book based on his grading here, very fine. So this is Daredevil number 68. And from the same gentleman, Daredevil number 60. Um, and some of them he puts uh, double boards in as well too, just to kind of stiffen it up a little more. <coughs> He's got a hell of a selection of books. Um, I really just focused on Daredevil, but he had a bunch of Doctor Strange as well. Uh, but I, I just, once I sat with the list and realized how close I was, I figured I just really want to hit the Daredevils. Um, number 58. Super, just fantastic cover. Number 52 with the Black Panther, but so yeah, the prices that you're seeing on here, these are the prices that I paid. So eight bucks, uh, eight bucks Canadian for 52. And again, they're really, really nice. Um, well, 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 well within the range of, uh, of what I like. Uh, this one has some staining in the corner. This is number 50. Um, and then these next two I bought from a guy and he, he knocked off, uh, you know, dealer to dealer kind of dealer price. He knocked five bucks off. So I got both of these for 15 bucks instead of 20. Uh, this is number 49. <coughs> and then number 46. Um, and then back to the other fine gentleman, uh, number 45, a beautiful cover that I love it. The drawing over the photograph is just fantastic. Um, this one was a, a little more on the pricey side, but I couldn't pass it up because it's in beautiful shape. <coughs> like I said, I did, I did pretty damn well today like I even walked away with extra money in my pocket surprisingly um, I didn't spend every last dime uh, so this is issue number 42 that was a $20 book uh, but the white is really nice like it's a beautiful looking book um, off-white for sure but still uh, yeah a lot whiter than any other old daredevil I have that has a white cover and then last but not least, this one I bought from a new guy. I've never seen him before at the convention. Um, he may be around, he seemed to know a few people, but I think he was relatively new. Uh, and he knocked five bucks off the price on this one. So this was a, a $30 book, uh, but it's Daredevil number 13. And it's just beautiful. He had a He had a bunch of really old daredevils, but most of them were a little more than I want to pay. Uh, they were kind of in the $50, $55 range. Um, I think he had issue four slabbed or something too. He had he had a couple of daredevils slabbed, but the, he had a small pile, maybe like six or seven uh, in Mylar. This was one of the more affordable ones though. So issue number 13, 30 bucks. I think that's Pretty damn reasonable. So he had it priced at 35. Gave me a nice little discount. Super nice guy. So yeah, there you go. That's it. Um, it was a great time. <coughs> yeah, I totally did, Nerdy Vision. I, I'm really, really happy with that. Uh, I, I just love the Daredevil books. I mean, it was one of those things that 
I would have loved to have found um, a couple more off of my list here, but there was a couple of guys with a lot of our fighting forces books um, that I was missing, but it just, the daredevils were just jumping out at me. And like I said, the Dr. Strange, uh, I think I saw issue 169 actually, and probably 177 as well. The two that I'm missing. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't resist. Uh, I'd love to complete that daredevil run. I don't think it's going to happen this year, but it really feels like something that could possibly happen next year. And I mean, depending on how the C4 convention goes, who knows, maybe I can put a bigger dent in it there. Cause that convention, I always end up scooping up a bunch of daredevils. Um, <coughs> that's about it. I don't think there's anything new uh, other than I had a good chat with somebody today. Uh, yes, G Don, I've got uh, a whole bunch of Zap books, a, a ton of them. Um, some multiple, some uh, various printings as well too. If you go in my back catalog of videos, if you look for some of the underground videos, uh, you'll see some of those in there for sure. Um, I was talking to somebody today about Guy Colwell uh, and just saying how it's amazing even with, and I mean, I'm sure this goes across the board with any sort of comics or any sort of collectible that you're involved in, especially when it's art related. Um, as much as I've loved and read underground comics for many, many years of my life, uh, when I discovered Guy Caldwell, it was one of those things like, how did I not discover this guy earlier? Um, where the hell, <laughs> why was I sleeping on this guy's name? Why didn't he cross my path at any time? Uh, Again, Christina on uh, Twitter had just bought the Inner City Romance Collected. Uh, and anybody who's watching, I'll say it like I've said a million times, I, I can't recommend that series enough. If you want to try out some underground comics and if you want something to give you a kind of nice overview of what the best that kind of genre or, or uh, niche genre can can yield uh inner city romance is incredible so last night i i read doll issue number one the series that he did in was it 1989 i don't remember but uh an incredible book um i have some gaps i'm missing two three and four uh or sorry no just two and three yeah uh, missing issues two and three so this is as far as i'm gonna go right now i really want to read them in order but this is another one. If if you find this, uh, I say pick it up. Don't hesitate. Anything with Guy Caldwell's name on it, I would say don't hesitate. <coughs> but especially that inner city romance series or mini series, I think it was five issues, is well worth your money. Um, yeah, so it was really great to talk about to some guys about undergrounds. It's really nice to know that there's even more of us out here in the city. Uh, yeah, and hopefully that'll... Hopefully that'll help in kind of f filling out my collection even more um, and actually have people to trade with. It was nice to finally trade some books, uh, book for book. And, you know, he was really, it was funny because he was really concerned that, are you sure that you're okay with that deal? It's like, absolutely. Like these are extras, you know, and it's not like I paid a fortune for them to begin with. And I have the undergrounds marked pretty cheap. Um, I have them priced pretty cheap. Um, because I didn't pay much for them because they were part of collections that I bought, uh, where even with the shipping tacked on, I got a really sweet deal on them considering the, the condition that some of them are in. So it's nice to know that there's guys out there who are now also going to keep their eyes out for me, uh, and, and hopefully have something to trade in the future as well. So, uh, yeah, successful convention right on. Thanks very much for watching everybody. G Don nerdy vision. And uh, the couple other you that are hanging out out there, thanks very much. <coughs> Nerd Vision, we'll see you in October for sure. And thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you. Bye.